Hi, and welcome to this tutorial video. This is gonna be more of a home lab tutorial video uh, where I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use that bootable USB we created in the last video with Windows Server 2022 and how to install that on a laptop. Now you could use pretty much the same instructions to install on a desktop, um, but I'm showing it on a laptop because I fear that's probably the most accessible type of hardware these days. Uh, and oftentimes, um, when you install a Windows Server OS, whether it be 2019, 2022, 2016, um, or even older, oftentimes the Wi-Fi will not actually work on default on the laptop. There's actually going to be some roles that we need to install for sure. Uh, and then maybe some drivers that we actually need to uh, manipulate or install to get these working on a laptop. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And then we're also going to be just renaming the server um, afterwards. We're not going to be doing any Hyper-V configuration in this video, just a simple Windows Server install on a laptop. Um, and then we're going to have some uh, future videos, which we're going to be configuring our Hyper-V um, role and also then bringing up some different VMs. We're going to be looking at desired state configuration as well. So be sure to stay tuned for those videos as well. But let's actually go ahead and let's get started on installing Windows Server 2022 on a laptop here. So I've booted already into the boot menu here, uh, which that you can boot into depending on the laptop. It could be F12, it could be F2, or it could even be a different function key. Uh, they do change based on the vendor of the laptop. Uh, so just be sure that you know how to boot into your boot menu. And then we are actually going to pick this UEFI. Uh, this is our USB. Uh, mine is just a vendor co- uh, production code, that's the name of it. It might say Kingston Media or whatever your USB media is. So we're going to actually go ahead and we are going to select this UEFI and I'm going to put in my BIOS password because I have one. You might not actually have the password prompt. And then it's going to be loading our files for the install here. So we're just going to wait till this finishes. And this could take a few minutes. It doesn't usually take that long and I'm actually then going to zoom in on the screen here uh, just so you guys can actually see my screen better during the install because uh, I know that sometimes it is quite hard to read so we actually have this window here I'm going to be leaving everything as the default uh, so let me just find my mouse here And there it is. All right, so we're gonna be leaving everything as English, English, and US. And we are gonna then click on next. And we are gonna click on install now. And this is gonna bring up a window very, very shortly here. And in here, we are going to pick the standard evaluation desktop experience. Now you can do this in core. I am doing this as, as a desktop experience. Uh, just to be able to show you guys more graphically uh, what we're doing. Uh, but we're going to be renaming the server uh, through a PowerShell command. Uh, so we won't actually be using the GUI uh, in this scenario. Uh, but definitely in some future videos, I might be doing some specific manipulations with Hyper-V uh, directly in the GUI to show you guys around some bugs that I have found uh, that sometimes can happen with Hyper-V. So... Uh, we're going to pick the Ser Windows Server 2022 Standard Evaluation Desktop Experience. And that problem is mostly related to laptops. Um, so if you do have a desktop, you might not encounter a lot of these problems unless you're using a Wi-Fi dongle um, on the desktop. You will experience those as well. Um, so here we are just accepting the terms and conditions here. I like to do a custom install. And all I want to do actually it first here is just delete all of these different uh, partitions here. It's going to create them automatically anyways once we format the drive. And we are just going to hit new here. We are going to hit apply and click OK. And there it is. It makes basically our uh, partitions that it Windows needs by default. And we are just going to make sure that we are installing on the primary partition here. And we are going to click on next.
and it should start any moment. And here it is. It's actually just starting here. So I just decided to pause the recording because this can sometimes take a few minutes here. Um, so we're just going to actually let this install fully complete here. And I'm going to come back at the next screen that comes up. So I will see you guys in a few minutes. All right. So once it's actually all done installing, we're going to get this screen here, which is just going to say that the server will actually restart to continue. We're just going to let that run down and the computer will actually restart on its own. Uh, so let's actually just wait for that to come back up here. And once it comes back up, we will actually have some more prompts to mm. fill out. All right, so we are just booting into the screen here. So at the bottom, actually, what you might see is uh, getting ready and you might get some progress on here as well. Um, and I'm just going to zoom back in here once we are at the screen where we are actually getting prompted to put in a administrator password. So you're going to notice that it does uh, reboot quite a few, like it seems like it reboots like once or twice, uh, which this is completely normal. It is part of the process. And here we are now at the screen for a password. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put in my administrator password in here. Now this is going to be completely up to your choosing. Um, since it's a home lab, of course, it's always best to practice a best practice and make this password as secure as you possibly can. And we are going to then click on finish here, which is actually just on the side here, uh, right underneath me, but it is at the bottom right hand side here. So we're just going to click on finish. And here we are now we are actually at the screen, we have fully installed Microsoft server. So let's actually go ahead and let's log in. And we are going to notice that on the bottom bottom side here. So let me actually just deactivate my camera real quick. We will see that we do actually have no internet. We will see like this little globe here um, that we have no internet at all on this machine. So let's actually go ahead and let's fix that here. So let me just bring me back here and let's get started. So the first thing, there's actually a couple things that we can do um, because there are a couple things that we need to do to bring back the Wi-Fi. And the first one is that I would recommend do is installing the driver for your network adapter. Now I actually already have the Wi-Fi adapter on a USB stick that I have right beside me. Uh, so I will be installing it off of that. If you don't have another computer, what you will actually have to do here is plug in a Ethernet cable um, from either your router um, or a switch or any uh, network device that you have uh, to give you internet. You're going to plug in your network cable in there, plug in the network cable on your laptop and go online and get that driver or use another computer um, and get the driver for your laptop uh, for the Wi-Fi driver here. So I actually have it right here. I'm actually just going to go ahead and install that. And one thing you might notice as well, uh, which I actually haven't mentioned yet, is you might notice your trackpad not working on server 2022. I've seen a lot of things online about this. I have not been able to fix it myself. If you guys have any tips on how to fix that, please let me know in the comment section. And I could add that to a separate video, um, but everywhere that I've looked, I've tried updating the driver and there's just no trackpad at all. 
Um, it wakes up the keyboard, like the keyboard backlight turns on when I touch the trackpad. Uh, trackpad works fine in the uh, boot menu, uh, but as soon as Windows Server 2022 is installed, it's just a no-go. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and install this Wi-Fi driver here. This usually doesn't take too, too long. Um, of course, it kind of depends on your Wi-Fi uh, driver here. I just have an Intel network card here. So it's just a fairly simple uh, walkthrough of installing this driver here. And we're just gonna let this finish. Uh, so I'm actually using a USB mouse um, in order to actually um, use this system here. So we actually have an error on the USB. So what we might actually do first here is actually do the other fix um, first. So one of the other things that you do have to do in order to bring back the Wi-Fi functionality and I'm actually going to do this in PowerShell here. So we're going to have to bring up a PowerShell ISE. You could just do this in the PowerShell console as well. I'm going to do this in the ISE just to give you guys um, a little bit more of a visual appearance of how this script would look like. And for this is we are actually going to be uh, doing a install dash Windows feature. And we are going to do the name, and this is going to be, uh, I actually don't remember the name of it. So we can do a get Windows feature. That's going to get us all the feature here. So it is wireless dash networking is what we need. Wireless networking. And we're going to go ahead and we are just going to install that. So this is actually going to go ahead and create, add the feature for wireless LAN support on a server. So you actually need this um, regardless of if it's a desktop with a Wi-Fi dongle or anything like that, you do actually need um, this feature installed before you can use Wi-Fi at all. So. Here we actually have to restart the server right after that. So let's go ahead and let's restart our server. And we are gonna come right back once it is booted back up here. So let me just pause the recording. We will be back when the server boots back up. All right, so we are back. So let me just log into the server now. Uh, there is one other thing that we need to do in order for the wireless service to actually be back on the server here. So we're just going to wait for everything to come back up here. And we are going to reopen up our PowerShell ISC once again in administrator mode. And we're just going to click OK. This is going to reopen our script that we had earlier. And all we're going to do now is we're going to do a start service on the name W LAN SVC. This is the wireless LAN service. It is actually off by default the first time. After you turn it on the first time, every time you reboot your computer, it will actually turn on. So now that we actually have that service fully turned on, let's go ahead and let's try installing our driver again here. I might need to download a new driver maybe, um, but let's go ahead and let's install this driver here. And you're just gonna wait for that screen to pop up and there it is. And we're gonna accept the conditions and hit install and it will start installing the driver here and there it is it's been installed successfully so i would say do the uh, install the windows feature first uh, that's the way that i did it the first time but i thought maybe the order didn't matter so i figured i would try doing the driver first 
uh, but that actually fails probably because the computer doesn't think that it can actually support wireless yet without installing that service. Um, that is kind of my assumption anyways on that. Uh, so now that we've actually installed the driver, we've turned on that service. If we actually go ahead here and I'm actually just going to take my camera off here so you guys can actually see me click on the little globe icon here. We will actually see that I can see the Wi-Fi networks here. So I can actually go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi network. Um, and we are just going to say yes to this here. And we are connected to the internet. So I can actually open up a web browser here. And we're going to get the standard intro for Edge here. And let's just get started. And we are just going to exit out of here. So everything is working. I can go to uh, google.com and it does work. So we can actually definitely confirm that the Wi-Fi is working. I'm just going to bring the camera back. We see that the Wi-Fi is working correctly here. So now the only thing that we have left to do uh, today here is actually renaming our server. Now we can actually rename our server here by simply using the rename computer commandlet. Uh, let me actually zoom in here a little bit. That might actually it might be very visible, um, but I'm a little worried that it is not. Uh, so once we actually have our rename computer here, we will put in our computer name. I'm actually going to name mine JP for Jacked Programmer, Hype V for Hyper V because it's going to be a Hyper V server, and it is server 22. So I'm going to give it the 2022 here. Uh, now, this command will work as is, but what we will actually do is do a dash restart as well. And what that's actually going to do is going to automatically restart the server after renaming it. We could have actually added as well the dash restart to the install Windows feature. Um, and that would have automatically rebooted the server after installing the wireless networking feature. Uh, so we wouldn't have had to do that manually. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and we are going to rename the computer here. And just to show you guys the name of the computer beforehand um, in server manager, we're going to be looking at it that way. Um, so let me just go ahead. We are going to go in here and in a local server. So there is our name. It is a very, very ugly name right now. It is win U U A, a uh, bunch of different characters and then a nine at the end. Um, so let's go ahead and let's rename our computer and the new name actually. Uh, so actually what we need to do instead of computer name here, because that's if we were running it remotely, it is going to be new name as the parameter and we are going to run this and there it is. It's already restarting. Um, so let's go ahead and let's zoom back out here and let's just wait for this server to restart. We're going to look at the name, make sure that everything is working correctly. And if so, we have successfully installed Windows Server on a laptop. All right, we are back. The laptop is rebooted here. So let's actually go ahead and let's log in. And here it is. And another thing to note as well, as you can see right on the side, on this side, um, the evaluation is good for 180 days. There is ways to actually reset that. You can reset an evaluation key, I think up to six times. Um, so you can get it basically, you can use it for a home lab for like two to three years. You can try it out. Um, now, of course, if you are using this in a uh, production environment, definitely would, um, be best to license it through the proper channels. Um, so let's go ahead and let's actually just take a look at our server manager and see what we have here. So if we close this, we look at local server, we will see that it has been renamed here. Let me actually just zoom in a little bit here. We can see that it has been renamed. And we can actually also see that we do still have internet. If I open up Edge here, 
And let me just zoom out here so you guys can see what's going on. And we go to, I mean, we're already getting news, but I can go to google.com just fine. Everything is working. Uh, so we have our basic environment for our home lab. We have a server OS installed on a just regular laptop. So you don't really need any super powerful machine to actually have a server OS. I would definitely recommend to try to put forward the home lab that we're going to be building. Um, have at least like eight gigs of RAM. Uh, that would greatly, greatly help. And more than likely like a quad core processor. You can do it with a dual core processor, uh, but it will definitely be really, really slow. Uh, and the machines that we're building in a Hyper-V will be really slow. Um, but it doesn't really matter what you have. Um, you, If you have a desktop, that's great. If you have a laptop, that is also great. Everything will work. Um, so stay tuned for those next videos. Those videos will be coming out very, very soon where we're going to be setting up Hyper-V. And then we are going to be playing with some VMs and some desired state configuration and tons more PowerShell uh, stuff coming down the way as well. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot through PowerShell for the Hyper-V and the VMs and, of course, the desired state configuration with PowerShell as well. If you guys have any comments or questions or, like I said, the solution to that trackpad problem, please let me know in the comment section down below. I will try to answer you guys uh, to my best every single one. And if it's something that can benefit a lot of people, I will make a video on it as well. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.